Hey, this is Zero at PG Zone HD, and in this video, I'm going to be showing the different layers of my 12th custom racetrack that I put together today. And I'm also going to be showing a race that I recorded a few minutes ago. It's going to be in the upper right corner. This was such a large track, and it took so long to get around it in three laps. I decided instead of making an extremely long video with the race at the end of it, like I usually have done in the past, I'm just going to show both of them at the same time. In another video I mentioned that I usually like to build the terrain first, but this track was just a little too big and I knew it was going to be this big and with the way that I wanted to design it, it would have been really tough to do the terrain first. So this was one of the few times I did build the track first. And if you watch the last video in which I showed the full race, I mentioned that the cars warped halfway across the track, the computer cars, as soon as the race started. And it does that every time that I race on here because when I first built this track, I had the starting finish line track piece facing in the opposite direction. So when I flipped it around and put the bridge on the other side of it, it kind of messed things up a little bit. And anytime you mess with the start track piece with moving it around or facing it in the other direction, it can cause problems like that when you go to race because the game just gets confused as to what's going on. Another example is I built another track and I moved the starting finish line halfway across the track and put it in a different position. But the lap count when I was racing wouldn't change until I passed the section that the start finish line was originally in, which would also cause problems when I went to finish the race. Either the race would finish early or it would finish late. It wouldn't actually finish when I crossed the finish line. But in this case, the fact that it warped the computer halfway down the track, it gave me a nice little challenge. And it wasn't too hard since it was such a long track. And I could have fixed it if I wanted it to, but I, I kind of thought it was interesting the way that it was set up. But anyways, back to the main topic. The second step for building this toy box was to create the terrain around the track. And once I had some of that completed, I took a few laps around. And I realized just how long this track was and how long it was taking just to get in one lap. And I was a little worried about how simple looking the track was because a lot of the pieces were just really long stretches of either straight or sloped track pieces without a lot of curves or angles. So I put down a bunch of boost pads and a few ramps and that's when it started to sort of come alive but it also still felt a little bit boring. So that's why I decided I was going to put some obstacles on and around the track to make it a little more interesting. And this was the first time that I used the grow and shrink pads for racing and I didn't realize that it was going to turn the cars into monster trucks so that was pretty cool. But those grow and shrink pads also cause some problems. If you watch closely, you're going to see when my car passes over them and it changes its size, it jerks the camera around. Sometimes the camera comes completely off my car. Other times it causes my car to just come to a dead stop. I don't think it happened in this video, but it did happen when I was racing around when I wasn't recording. And on the second lap of this race, when my car is small, it just completely loses control a couple times on its own when it shouldn't have because the game just has a hard time with the physics of the racing as a smaller car. The hills and the ramps were just a little too much for it to navigate. And while the track is fun and it's challenging, the racing's just a little bit messy with how it's set up, and there's really not a whole lot I could do to fix it unless I took out the ramps and the grow and shrink pads. So I'm not sure I was exactly thrilled with the end result of this track, but I do think it would make for some pretty cool multiplayer racing with other real players and not against the computer. And one of the first comments on the last video that I uploaded showing this track was someone had stated that they subscribed to this channel because they thought that video, that track, was really awesome. So I guess it's not too bad. Not everybody hates it. But you're going to notice some of the ramps and the super cannons that were in some of the early stages of the build, they vanished for the final version. The same goes with the way that the terrain looks. I made a lot of color changes to the blocks, the ground, the walls, and even the ceiling. With that much terrain, I figured to make this stage remotely interesting, it was going to need a lot of different color changes. And if I zoom back here, you can see just how much terrain it took to box in the whole track and make it appear as if you were racing underground. Now tomorrow I'm going to start back working on the walkthrough. I'm actually going to be able to record my commentary in the middle of the afternoon opposed to really late at night. Like right now it's 11 o'clock and I'm, I know I sound tired. I'm ready to go to bed. I stopped at the 30th walkthrough video for that. So I'm going to pick up where I left off there. And there's some other stuff on the game that I want to check out. So this is going to be all the custom toy boxes that I'm probably going to show for the next few days. But I will be coming back to them. And I have a few ideas of things that I want to create on here. One of which I'm actually really excited about. I think it's going to turn out really good. I've only had that type of feeling about two of the tracks that I've created before I actually built them. So 
I'm definitely looking forward to working on that one soon. I did come across a few new toy boxes that other people had uploaded on YouTube. One was a top-down Grand Theft Auto replica. That one was pretty good. That's one of the first times I've watched somebody else's toy box and was really impressed with something they did on there. I came across another one that someone had made that they had copied my Mega Man pixel art idea that I showed to you guys a few days ago they uploaded it yesterday and they did a Pokemon theme which was really cool but it would have been nice if they had given me a shout out in the video like hey I saw this on PG Zone and decided to do it myself but anyways whatever but I'm gonna call it an early night I'm going to bed I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow in the next video this is Zero at PG Zone HD and as always thanks for stopping by